So when you're scouting your plants, looking for pests, one of the very most important things is to make sure of what the pest is, even if it is a pest. So here's a great example. This is a beautiful crepe myrtle tree, uh, gorgeous form, and we know that crepe myrtles can have some pests. Now, as I was walking by, I noticed a large collection of insects right here on the bottom. Most people are not born insect lovers like entomologists are, and would be upset by seeing this on their plant. But what we know is that only about 1% of insects in the landscape actually do damage. The rest of them are either beneficial or indifferent. They're just there in the landscape doing their own thing. These insects actually are bibionids. They're love bugs, which if you're from Florida, you know that they can be a real pest as far as your car uh, paint goes. But these do not do any damage to the plant. Um, they're just there. They might irritate you. If they get in your way, you may want to control them. But as far as this crepe myrtle tree, they're not doing it any harm. When we think about controlling pests, pesticides are actually not one of the first things I typically think about. And what we see, specifically in people's landscapes, is that the more diverse the landscape is in terms of plant variety, time of bloom, you have multiple bloom times throughout the year, and height and structure of plants, the more beneficial insects we find, which keeps the pest population lower. For example, this tree right here has some very tiny, small flowers on it that provide a wonderful nectar source that pollinators and other beneficial insects use to help keep them alive when they're not busy eating our pests. So you can see here in this landscape, we have multiple different structures, leaf forms, as well as blooms that are of different sizes and different types. So planting a diverse landscape can be beneficial in terms of keeping the natural populations in balance. The goal with a landscape is not to keep it completely pest free or insect free. In fact, the whole goal is actually to keep a small population of insects for the beneficials to eat so that they'll stick around and do a good job for you in maintaining your, your plants. So a good example of this is lady beetles. We all love lady beetles, right? They're one of the most widely recognized beneficial insects in the landscape. However, as I mentioned about being able to recognize the difference between a good insect and one that's causing harm to your plant is very important. For example, right here, this is actually a lady beetle larva. This is a beneficial insect in the landscape, and we found her walking around on this fothergila leaf, eating the few aphids that are on there. Most people would not recognize this as our beloved lady beetle, and might actually think of it as a pest, when in reality, this little alligator-looking creature is actually walking around eating aphids and keeping our plants healthy. Another thing that you might see in the landscape in regards to lady beetles is right here is a pupal skin and you can see the adult lady beetle. We have the larva, which then turns into this pupa, which somebody might be mistake it for a scale insect or some other kind of pest. And it turns in to the lady beetle that we know that is a fantastic predator of aphids and other insects on our plants. So often when we talk about insects or pests in the landscape, we think in terms of good bugs versus bad bugs. And when we say that, what do we really mean? Most people, here's a, a spider in this landscape, would normally think of this as a bad bug. But actually, spiders are one of the top 10 beneficial insects in any landscape anywhere. They're excellent predators of other insects. Uh, and they kind of go quietly doing their job. As long as they're not in the house, most people don't mind them in the landscape. 